Is it possible for an average person with no financial background or qualification, or maybe that do not even add math at school, to outperform the best fund manager or broker or uh, advisor with at least 100% when it comes to unit trust? So when we look at unit trust and we take a period of five years or 10 years, make, let's make it 10 years. Over a 10-year period, you're going to find that the top 1% of the funds could not get a 15% growth on your investment. So immediately, 15% is not going to move the needle. We need to find something else if we want to be financially free, let's say, in 10 years' time, especially if you start with something small like a 1,000 rand per month, as an example. Now, why is it that we can outperform them? We've been conditioned to believe a lie. In other words, they want us to believe that the only way that we can invest is to trust them and to give our heart and money, the money that we work for, our blood, our sweat, to them. But you see, when we look at what Warren Buffett, one of the greatest investors over a long period of time, said, is that risk is when you do not understand what it is that you're doing. So the moment that I'm taking my money and I'm giving it to someone else, it means literally that I've got no idea what I'm doing. Therefore, I'm taking all of the risk. I'm not taking a part of the risk. I'm taking all the risk. So the way to offset risk is simply to have the skills. That simply means that I can never learn the skills to lower the risk or to mitigate the risk or to eliminate the risk. But at the same time, I've got no control over the growth on my money. In other words, I do not have the skills to grow my money. And that is where the problem comes in. You see, there's only two games that we can play when it comes to the game of making money. There are two financial games. The one game is where I'm going to play with my own money. That means I'm taking the risk. That means that I can learn the skills to manage my risk down. But by doing so, I can get a better growth on my investment. And these skills, they are never going to teach you. They will never, never, not the educational system, not the financial system will teach this to you. Because let's face it, if you know, for example, how to get a 65% growth on your investment over a 10-year period, there's no ways that you're going to take your money and give it to them. And that's the game that they play in order to say, but this is a growth that we're getting on your money. So the two games are either I'm playing with my own money or I'm giving my money to someone else where they play the game on my behalf. But the problem is they're always using your money. In other words, the client's money. There's no other ways that they can play that game. They don't know how to do it themselves. And therefore, they need your money. And they're going to give you a miserable growth, like 15%. And they're going to let you believe that 15% over a 10-year period is actually a great return. But as I've said, 10 years... Uh, to move the needle in 10 years with, with 15%, it's, it's not going to, to make a difference. Unless, unless you're rich already. But most of us, when we started off, we start with basically nothing or very, very little. The moment that I take my money and I give it to them, I'm out of the game. I'm, I'm sitting on the sideline and I've got no, no, no idea. I can only hope and pray that they're going to give me more or less better than, let's call it inflation. Or maybe better than most other fund managers. But I can't build a legacy or I can't get to my financial freedom um, based on what other people are going to do. I have to take the responsibility. And this is something that I discovered in 1987. And I'm so glad that I put in the time and the effort initially to understand how this game worked. Luckily for me, at that point in time, I was learning to become a financial planner. And I saw that we were learning how to sell products, right? We, we knew everything about the product, about the legal side, about the tax side, but we did not know how to do it ourselves. We always had to get money from the client to invest on behalf of the client. Always. That's the way that it works. And I wanted to know at that point in time, but how can I do it myself? What, what are the skills not to rely on the stock market, as an example, or on a mutual fund manager? or someone or a unit trust fund manager, right? So now why is it that the average person will never, never win that game? I'd like to give you maybe the main reason why that is. You see, we do not understand risk. Warren Buffett says risk is when you, when you do not understand what it is that you're doing. So when I give my money to someone else, 
I'm taking the risk. Now, if I'm taking the risk, on top of that, there's no ways that I can learn the skill to offset that risk. It is impossible because the moment that I'm giving my money to, to them, it's actually not my money anymore. There's a promissory note that under certain conditions or circumstances, I could take my money or they'll give it back. But as long as they've got it, it belongs to them and they can do within their mandate whatever they want to do. And it's got nothing to do with me. Unless I want to take my funds out and give it to another fund manager or another broker that's going to place it with fund manager or big companies. So risk is when you do not know what you're doing. And for that reason, we need to understand what that is. Because in any investment, you're going to find these two parts to it. There's the risk part and there's the growth part. But the main thing that very few people focus on is the risk part. Because if I can get the risk down immediately, the growth must go up. And it's directly opposite to what, what I've learned while I was studying to become a certified financial planner like 30 years ago. Right. And that was the higher the risk, the higher the growth. It's nonsense. It is absolutely nonsense. And as long as we believe that, we're going to keep on doing what we're doing at the moment, the majority of people at least, and that is to give your money to someone else without taking the responsibility to learn the skills. Now, why is it that they are always going to to, to, to win, irrespective of what's happening, because they're going to get fees. So whenever I take my money and I hand it over to them, guess what's going to happen? They are going to collect the fees and they cannot lose, irrespective of what happened. So they are going to, through the, the organizations, they are protecting themselves. They're going to protect the brokers, the advisors, the fund managers, the companies, everyone that is involved in that game for and on behalf of them. Will be, will be protected by the way that they set things up. But you, the client, are always going to lose. Always. Why do I say so? Let me give you one simple example. This is one of, of many. The moment that I work for my money, what do I normally do? The average person, we go to an expert to do an analysis for us. And that expert is going to have a look at our affairs and say, okay, he advised that we split it immediately. All the places where he's going to place your money, all of it, is where someone is going to get a commission or a fee, or more than one person that is going to get a commission or a fee. In other words, it's not an add-on, it's a takeaway, because we believe that, yeah, but we do not pay the fees, but it's directly from our investment that it is taken. In other words, when we look at the allocation amount, it's after. And that's, by the way, the way that they're going to, to calculate their growth is after all costs are excluded. What is a growth? So that growth and the real growth is not the same thing, although we listen to the media and we believe that it is. So this person is then going to say, okay, invest in the different medium, low, depending on what risk profile you fall in. He or she is going to take it to a fund manager and the fund manager, they are going to manage it. But let's talk about the broker. So the broker is going to get his commission and he's going to get the commission up front. Now, I've got nothing against commission. If a person earns his commission, then nothing wrong with it. But do you know that with Unitrust, and as an example, if that funds over a 10 year period turns out to get a negative growth, the, <laughs> the broker already received his money within the first month, within the first year. He already received it. So he cannot lose. Why not? Because it's not his money. I hope that you see where I'm going with it. And then he's going to place it with fund managers. Now the fund managers, they cannot lose either. Why not? For the simple fact that even if they get a negative growth year on year, you're still going to pay them a management fees and all the fees that you agreed upon when you enter into that transaction. So it's not their money. They did not work for that money. It's not their blood. It's not their sweat. It's not their tears in order to, 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 to manage that. Of course, the better they're going to do, the more money they're going to, to draw. But that's not always the case because the person that can do the best marketing normally has got the most funds and the, the management or get other people to do the marketing on their behalf. So this whole thing is, is against us because they cannot lose. 
but they're taking the money away from you. Now, let's talk about the financial system. The old mutuals and the sunlums and the liberties, I've got nothing against those peoples in the bank. But do you think that they can lose? No, they can't lose. Why not? Because it's not their money. The source of the money always comes from you. No one else. Without you handing over your money to them and hoping that they understand and that they know what to do with your money, it's not going to work. So the moment that I'm giving my money to someone else, I'm taking all of the risk. So this whole story that you must do a risk profile and they, they, they ask you a lot of questions and then according to that, they're going to invest on your behalf. It's nonsense. Because you, my friend, always takes all the risk, irrespective of what happens with that unit trust, with the growth, either positive or negative. You are taking the, the, the risk. And they are taking your money, but they do not take the risk. In other words, they are totally, totally risk-free on condition that they stay within the mandate of what they can do and what they can't do. Because it's never their money. If it's my money, then I need to take the responsibility to learn the skills. And these skills, my friend, you're not going to learn from the educational system or the financial system. Because <laughs> let's, let's face it, if you know how to get 65% growth, as an example, on a thousand rand, that's going to give you a little bit more than 10 million in a uh, 10 year start. Do you think for one moment, if you know how to do it, if you've got the skills to be able to do something like that, that you're going to give it to a fund manager that maybe if you're lucky and you're in the top 1% and he or she is getting 15% on that, that that thousand rand is only going to be 275,000 rand, more or less. Will you ever in your life, in your right mind, take any more money and give it to someone else the moment that you know how to do it yourself and get 10.3 million versus 275,000? In other words, the risk that you're taking by, by not gaining the skills by giving your money to someone else over a 10 year period on a thousand rand on condition that you've got the skills is 10 million, my friend. When I discovered this in 1987, I said, no ways, no, there's, there's no ways. I am going to learn the skills. Now, those days, no one wanted to show me this, but I could see that other people, they got it because they were rich people. They were people that were my clients that became rich over a very, very short period of time. And when I looked at their portfolio, there were no endowment policies. There were no retirement annuities or very, very little. There were no unit trust. Uh, sometimes, most of the time, not even in the stock market directly. They made their money by applying the wealth creator strategy. Now, you're going to say to me, honest, but what on earth is a wealth creator strategy? If I can give you a quick definition, it's the intelligent use of limited resources to go from where you are to where you want to be in the shortest possible time with the least amount of risk. So if I want to get to 10 million where at least I can be financially independent in, let's say, 10 years, of course, depending on the, what the inflation rate is going to do, then I need to get on a thousand rand, as I've said, about 65% growth in order to be able to do it. But there's no ways that I'll be able to do it by giving my money away. Now I have to learn the skills. And those skills are not very difficult because there's only four high value uh, skills that we need to, to master. And the most difficult thing, perhaps, or one of them, is the fact that we need to, to own on our personal development. In other words, the mental skills. Because that is where people go wrong. You know, in the beginning, when things do not explode, we start to doubt ourselves and we start giving our money to someone else, hoping that they're going to do it better. Or we do not trust ourselves, or we are in doubt if we can ever learn the skills. The second one is high income skill. The third one is to turn that high income skill, once you've mastered that, into a high business skill. But not a business where you're going to withdraw the money. I'm talking about investment. And then from that money, if there's still a surplus, then where do we place that money? I'm placing the money basically back into business or businesses. I'm placing it into cryptos and I love, absolutely love property. Because the moment that we understand property and the risk that's attached to property, and how we can use property, that forms the baseline, at least for me. I call it my security blanket. So the moment that I'm in property, I know that I can get a growth of 65% plus, far better than 65%. But I first need to have the skills. And that's basically what I've done. 
1987 when I developed the property pro investment system where I identify the risk and then I discover but with each and every risk there are several ways that I can offset that and by stacking all these risks on top of one another so we're looking at the worst case scenario how can I handle that if I could handle that and still outperform these guys with 100 percent then that is a reason why I started investing in property but the beauty about property is once you start building a portfolio, you start going to collect income. And it's almost like, almost like a passive income. I do not need to do a lot of things because my letting agents are doing this stuff. And then what do I do with that money? And that is where I can bring it back into a business or I can bring it back into cryptos and I can do a mix and a match between it and I can get a phenomenal growth. So although 65% is the baseline, that, that's the baseline. The moment that you start applying this, where you combine all these skills, the wealth creator skills, you're going to find that you can get explosive growth. That's why in one of the challenges that I'm busy with and that I will explain in one of my upcoming um, masterclasses, the 500k masterclass, I'm going to explain how I've taken only 100 rand, a total of 100 rand with no other security. And I know for most people, it sounds ridiculous. It sounds impossible. But I can prove that to you, that 100 rand total. And two years later, we're more than 4 million already on that. This is the power of investing in yourself, of gaining the skills. And I'd like to, to share this with you, if that is something that you are interested in. So if you're serious, then you're going to find a link on this page. I want you to click on that link to book for the 500k masterclass. And then in the masterclass, I'm going to, to share with you four pillars of wealth. In 1987, when I started mastering this and I started applying this in my life, and by the way, I started with property. The moment that you start doing that, the growth was so phenomenal that seven years later, we were financially independent. In other words, we were financially free. It's, it's an amazing, amazing strategy. So if you are serious and you want to find out a little bit more about that and how perhaps you can apply it in your life, then click on that link and make sure to attend. Now, at the same time, please do not waste your time. If you know that you don't want to take the responsibility, if it's a lot more convenient for you to give your money to someone else, hope and praying that they're going to give you a reasonable return, like 15%, which by the way, is above, far above the average, then this masterclass is not going to be for you because I'm going to expect from you to take the responsibility to learn. And most people don't want to learn. You know, the moment that they out of school or out of um, college or university, that whole process stops. Now, I'm a lifelong learner. If you're not one of those, then why do you want to attend a boring, boring a masterclass? It makes no sense. So please do not click on that button if you fall into that category. For those of you that do click. I can't wait to see you there. Thanks for your time. And I see you then in the masterclass.